Welcome back. This is lesson 11.2. We're going to find the area of parallelograms and triangles. So we have an area formula for a parallelogram. We went over it in the prior lesson, but we know that the area of the base times the area of the height is going to be the area of the parallelogram. Now remember that the height has to be straight up and down, so that it has to be perpendicular. You know, so the height is perpendicular to the base. If it's not, then you're not able to do that. So you are not using the side and side. So in like example one, if you use the 12 and the 8, that's not going to cut it. You're not going to be able to just to multiply those two and say that's the area. In a rectangle, it works because the sides are perpendicular. But in this case, um, in a parallelogram, they're not. So let's uh, take example one and find the area of the parallelogram. Well, we know the area formula is base times height, okay? Well, if we say 12 is the base, we're okay there. We need to figure out the height for it right here. This is what we're looking for. Well, we know this angle is 120. So what I would do is I would draw a line that's going to go perpendicular. So it's causing a right angle above, which means this is perpendicular over here. Well, this angle was 120 right here. 90 is over here. So how much is this angle right here? 30 which now you notice that this triangle right here ends up being a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. When you know that, if you were to draw it over on the side, what do you know? You know this side is x, this side is 2x, and this side is x root 3. So in our case, we have 8. 8 is equal to the 2x, so 2x is equal to 8. x equals 4, which means that the 30 side over here is 4 which this side is 4 root 3. Now we have enough information. Do we plug it in? And we're able to solve and say the area is 48 root 3. And then there's no units, so we have to put units squared because we're finding some type of area. Make sure there is units available. And the next question, we're trying to find the length of this line right here, x. All right. But what do we know? We know it's perpendicular to the 6. Okay. The only other thing that we do know, if we look at the information, is that this 15 and this 4 are perpendicular to each other. So what I would do is I could say, hey, let's see here. I can find the area of this parallelogram by doing 15 times 4. Okay. When I'm able to do that, I end up getting 60. If I look at it the other way, 6 could be the base and x could be the height because it's perpendicular um, that way. So I can always say that the area is equal to 6 times x. But wait a second, what's the area? We know that the area is 60, so we can plug that in and say 60 is equal to 6x divided by 6. So the missing height over this way would be 10. The purpose of this question is to for you to notice that um, either side can be the base, you just have to allow the height to be perpendicular to it. Moving on to triangles. To find the area of a triangle, what you have to do is you have to do um, one half base times height, or people like to write it as base times height divided by two. Those are both the same formula. To be able to do that, once again, the height needs to be perpendicular to the base. So in this obtuse triangle, because that angle is obtuse, you would notice that the right angle is outside of the picture, back from chapter 5 when we were drawing altitudes to triangles. We would have figured that out. And then we're able to do, hey, this is the base, just this length right here, not the dotted line, just this length, and that would be the height to that triangle. Knowing that, let's look at example three. See the 45, so we need to figure out the height. So we'll be able to draw in the height right there. We know that the formula is area equals one half base times height. Well, the base I'm going to use is the four. So we got one half, four times, and then we need to figure out the height. Well, looking at it, this big triangle, this angle is 45, this is 45, that's 90. And when we look at it, we can superimpose that this side would be x, this side would be x, and this side would be x root 2. So before we can move on, we can set x root 2 equal to 20, solve for x, 
by dividing by root 2, multiplying top and bottom by root 2, and we get 20 root 2 over 2, which is 10 root 2. That would be the x side, so this side would be 10 root 2. Being able to do that, now we can put in 10 root 2 here, and we can get our final answer when we multiply it as 20 root 2. And once again, unit squared because there was no units that were given. All right, let's move on to example four. We have an isosceles triangle. What is an isosceles triangle? That is correct. It's a triangle with two sides that are congruent. At least two sides are congruent. So we'll say that's there. You notice that the sides are 20, 20, and then the other side would be 24, which we'll consider the base. If, we, if that is the base to find the area of this triangle, all right, we can draw in an altitude. That would be the height of what we're looking for. In an isosceles triangle, what did we learn back in chapter four? Is that if this line is the altitude to an isosceles triangle, it's also a median and an angle bisector. So this breaks up into 12 and 12. All right. Now we're able to figure out the missing height because you can do Pythagorean theorem and say 20 squared is equal to 12 squared plus x squared. Or realize this is a 3, 4, 5 multiplied by 4. So the missing side ends up being 16. And now we can use our formula. Half base is 24. The height is 16. Multiply that together, and you get 192 units squared. Example 5. It says a right triangle with hypotenuse of 9 and area of 340. So we'll draw ourselves a right triangle. Okay. Hypotenuse is 9, so we'll put that there. And we got the area is equal to 340. We want to find the length of its altitude drawn to the hypotenuse. So basically, we want the line that is right there. Well, the hypotenuse, we normally never use the hypotenuse as the base of the, the triangle to find the area. But in this case, we're, we're stepping out of the shell and we're able to find it because if this is the base, this altitude, because it's perpendicular, is the height. So we're able to say that 1 half base times height is equal to the area. And now let's plug in our information. So we got half, the base is 9, times the height h is equal to 340. You're able to solve this however you want. I would personally multiply by 2 and say now 9h is equal to 680, and then divide by 9 to figure out the height of this is going to be 75. 0.5 repeated. All right, can we continue to move on? Let's do so. And finally, we're finishing with the equilateral triangle. Well, in this case, equilateral, all three sides are congruent, which means that this line drawn in ends up being an altitude. You also know if it's an equilateral, each angle has to equal 60 degrees. So we have each angle is 60 degrees. Well, what happens with this 60? This breaks it up into 30 and 30. So now we notice that if this side is s, which in our case, this would be the 2x, this would be the x, this would be the x root 3, we're able to say, OK, if the side is s, and that's the 2x, this side down here length is 1 half s. And this side over here is 1 half s root 3. Now, oh, putting that all together, if I was able to do that, the, the, the area formula is half the base, which is s, times the height, which is half s root 3. Putting that together, half times half is a fourth. So we have a fourth s squared root 3 which in other terms, the area formula for the equilateral triangle is s squared root 3 over 4. This shows you how this formula was created. This is the formula that you have to memorize to find the area of the equilateral triangle. 
using this all you need is the side length if you have the side length then you're able to find the area of the equilateral triangle and number six last but not least for our lesson find the area of the equilateral triangle with uh and the shaded region so we know that the uh, radius of the circle is three okay if we could get the side length to the equilateral triangle we're able to then um be able to solve this question so what i would do is i would draw in a line that would go to there this is an, a radius to a tangent so it's a right angle this length is 3 this was equilateral so this becomes 30 which means this angle is 60 so this side is 3 perfect what do you notice if this side is the 30 that's x this side over here is 60 so this is x root 3 and this is 2x all right well if this side is 3 we know that this length right here is 3 root 3 so a whole side length is 3 root 3 and 3 root 3 so that's 6 root 3 now can we find the area of the equilateral triangle sure can we know the formula is s squared root 3 over 4 we plug it in so we got 6 square root of 3 square it times root 3 over 4 well how do you square this well what is it it's 36 times 3 because root, square root of 3 squared and then we're timesing by 3 over 4 which finalizes to 108 root 3 over 4, and then that simplifies to 27 root 3. And we have to have units squared for our answer. And then we wanted the shaded area. Well, we know the area of the triangle, including the circle, is that. How do we remove that circle? Well, we find the area of the circle and we subtract it. So for the shaded region, we'll take the triangle and we'll subtract the circle. We know the triangle area is 27 root 3, and we're going to subtract the area of the circle. How do you find the area of the circle? Pi r squared, that's from last chapter. What's the radius? 3, so we do pi times 3 squared, which ends up equaling 9 pi. So we have the answer of 27 root 3 minus 9 pi units squared. And we're done. Hopefully this makes sense to you, and hopefully um, you were able to understand what we were doing here. Good luck, and uh, we will see you in class.